reggae music, tropical white sand beaches. These are the images that come to mind when people think of Jamaica. Less thought of is one of the island's largest predators, the American crocodile. It's part of our heritage. It's on our coat of arms. The crocodile is the mascot for our cricket team, the Jamaica Tullowers. It's on our Jamaica Defense Force. Most people here fear the crocodile. They think it's like a monster that will come and get you. Jamaicans have an ingrained fear of reptiles in general, so we don't like lizards, and a crocodile is just a very big lizard. So most people are of the view of the best crocodile is a dead one, so we have to try and combat that. American crocodiles are not man-eaters like the Nile crocs are, like the saltwater crocs are. Other crocodiles have a disposition of killing people American crocodiles don't. They could, but they prefer not to. Crocodiles will defend themselves if you molest them. Otherwise, they'll keep away from you. They don't want to have anything to do with human beings. American crocodiles are found in 17 different countries, ranging from South Florida, throughout the Caribbean, and Central America down to Peru. In Jamaica, they face a lot more problems than in other countries. They were normally found around the whole island, but mostly on the south coast, which had a larger area of wetlands. They live along the coast in salt water and brackish water. They're especially restricted by nesting habitat. They only nest on sandy, sunny, secluded beaches in South Jamaica. And what's happening is, with all the construction, there's not a lot of sandy, sunny, secluded beaches remaining. There has been a radical drop off in the past 10 years of the wild population. Habitat loss, along with poaching, have led to their drastic decline. The crocodile was here before us. You might not find it beautiful, but I find it beautiful. They have a role in our environment, and a lot of studies have been showing when you remove the top predators, there's a lot of problems. I'm not asking people to love crocodiles. I'm asking people to try to understand them a little bit more. We're dealing with a cultural animal. This is part of our heritage, and we owe it to ourselves to protect our cultural heritage. And they've been around a long time, much longer than we've been living on this island. Can the American crocodile survive in Jamaica? What is being done to save the species? In Jamaica, the place for tourists to go and see wild crocodiles is Black River, a small community on the island's south coast. Growing up, if you are ever interested in crocodiles or wanted to see crocodiles, the answer would be Charles Swaby. And that would be the only place to actually do river tours and see crocodiles. So here now you can see just how nice and shaded this area is. I just love them. <laughs> they are nice animals. I've never been bitten or attacked by one, even when swimming in the water with them. While there are a number of eco-tour operators on the Black River today, Charles Swaby was the first opening for business in 1987. We started originally with one vessel, and right now we have eight vessels. It is a crocodile that is bringing people here. There are practically no other river in Jamaica where you can take vessels of this size on a nice, beautiful river 
without looking at garbage on the banks, without seeing the trees cut down. This is what we have here, something that is really authentic, something that is beautiful, and something that needs to be protected as much as possible. This is what people are coming here for, not just sun, sea and sand. Ecotourism plays a major role in educating people. They come away with a new appreciation and more information because there are a lot of misconceptions. Charles Swaby had been interested in crocodiles since he first saw one as a child. In the late 50s, while we were still at school, we used to go shoot them in those days. And in the holidays, I used to carry tourists out to hunt them. And then, I uh, got a soft spot for them. And rather than hunting them, I wanted to try and keep them in captivity, save them from some of the problems that we were seeing. Because I always said that if you shoot a crocodile, sure, the tourist that comes, he gets a skin, you get paid for carrying him out. But if you shoot him with a camera, you can shoot him a hundred times and collect for the tour. This wetland is the largest wetland in Jamaica, or certainly was. In 1997, the Black River Lower Morass was designated as a wetland of international importance by the Ramsar Convention, an intergovernmental treaty that provides the framework for the conservation and wise use of wetlands and their resources. The challenge though is that we don't have much management of these areas. We don't have enough people on the ground to manage um, the activities that are occurring there. We need to see what we can do to keep it in good condition so that the remaining animals that are here have somewhere to live that people won't just come in and kill them. Because this wetland right now, right here, is in problems. Black River Morass extends through a large section of the parish of St. Elizabeth and there's a road that connects communities along the coast of St. Elizabeth that cuts right through the wetland and some houses are built along the sea, there has been some farming and other development adjacent to the wetland and this is where we encounter problems with human and crocodile interactions. We do need education. I would really feel very badly if a few years down the road we are not going to be seeing any crocodiles here. Over his long career of working with crocodiles, Charles teamed up with scientists from overseas to tag animals and conduct surveys of wild populations along the south coast. We were doing it from about 1974 up into the 80s and I have recorded maybe data from close to 300 animals that we caught and tagged. The agency wants to collate the data that has been put down from before. We have in-house data that we keep adding to as well. And there are various studies that have been done across the island and we want to create a base and a model to help us better make decisions and influence policy when it comes to certain areas and guide us with conservation of crocs. We are aware that there is a problem. We don't have information to tell you what's the overall population size of the animal. While there currently isn't funding available to conduct a much needed population census for the entire island, Research is taking place on a remote beach on Jamaica's south coast. It lies in a protected area that is owned and managed by Jamaica's Urban Development Corporation, or UDC. It's nearby Kingston, yet you're like in a whole nother world out here. There's been uh, a population surveys conducted off and on in Jamaica since, I would have to say, the 60s. I'm working with the University of West Indies, and a couple of other entities, and we're trying to replicate those original surveys with baseline data 
to estimate the number of crocs remaining in Jamaica. American biologist Joe Wazalewski has been researching crocodiles in Jamaica since the late 1990s. There's two ponds to the east and to the west where we camp, and we might hit it once or twice a year in terms of spotlight surveys and captures, and we've got well over 100 captures. And what we're learning is growth rates. We're learning about when crocodiles grow up, they go to different habitats. So we're learning a lot of valuable information by coming here and collecting the crocs in these two areas. This would be considered a juvenile habitat. They're ponds that are a little shallower and less likely for adults to come in. An eight-foot croc will eat a three-foot croc like that. So they go from wherever they're hatched, usually a beach, to this pond of low salinity. And then when they get to be an age where they're nearing maturity, they're going to move and they're gonna spread out. So I'll get this noose set up. The best time to count and catch crocodiles is at night, when experts can more easily find the animals by pointing flashlights and looking for their red eye shine. American crocodiles are pretty shy animals and they're, they could be real difficult to catch. Uh, I don't like to brag, but I've caught probably 5,000 or more over my career, so. <laughs> First time, man. <laughs> I know a little bit about their habits and you have to be very stealthy. That's a beauty, man. Uh, and it's a recapture. When we catch a crocodile, there's a standard procedure for particular measurements. Snout vent, a total length. 41.2. And then we measure the girth of the tail. That's sort of just a health indicator. And then every animal is weighed and every animal is sexed. Okay, male. And then we assign it a number. We clip scoots for that. And the scoots that we clip they're kind of like your fingernail, and we keep those scoots, and we're doing DNA analyses for that. And I don't want to be too premature here, but I have a really funny suspicion the crocodiles here are the unique species. Recent genetic research by other experts suggests there likely are distinct populations of American crocodiles within their range, which could mean the crocodile in Jamaica is either a subspecies of the American crocodile or its own species altogether. That would change the conservation value of the animal and it would make it much more important if it's an endemic to this island. Scientists also microchip the animals to identify them in the future. They're passive devices that give the animal a barcoded number. And in the microchip, which is about the size of a grain of rice, is injected into their tail. We scan it, and it's just like you going to the grocery store getting a box of crackers. You, know, you scan it, and there's the number. When I know I'm going out, okay. you know, looking for crocs, it, it's exciting. So I'm totally, absolutely fascinated by these animals, and it's my lifelong mission to see they're protected and future generations can enjoy them. Habitat fragmentation and loss have been a problem for American crocodiles across much of their range. While the International Union for Conservation of Nature currently lists American crocodiles as vulnerable, they are considered endangered in Jamaica. Like other countries, the island nation has laws on the books to protect the species. We have two main laws, the Wildlife Protection Act, and the Endangered Species Conservation and Trade Act. You're not supposed to have it in your possession, either the entire animal or parts of the animal. You shouldn't try to catch it or molest it or anything like that. But despite the threat of fines and imprisonment, poaching of crocodiles for meat has increased in recent years. Poaching would be the number two cause of population decline, in my opinion, of the crocodile. And that has been fairly recent, I would say in the last 12 years. 
it has become more of a thing. And because it fetches a fairly high price, that demand is actually driving this illegal activity. There's this myth that it's an aphrodisiac. So they're saying that if you eat the man-eater, you'll be strong. There is also no market for eggs to make punch and stuff like that. Some would say it's because of some new people to the island having different appetites. Um, some would say it's, it's just people being more exposed. And it's a problem because clearly our numbers are decreasing. The biggest challenge to combating poaching and harassment of the animals is a lack of manpower for enforcement. One area where there have been quite a few human crocodile encounters is the urban community of Portmore, just outside of Jamaica's capital, Kingston. The Portmore area is actually one of the largest residential communities in the entire Caribbean region. And it so happens that this residential community is actually built in a wetland area. It was a good crocodile habitat. Most people are going to tell you, oh, they're in my backyard and they don't know that they are the ones that are in the backyard. So you find that these houses have a lot of canals going through them, and these canals are connected to swamp areas that have these crocodiles. So you find that especially when you have um, floods or rains, these crocodiles come up into these areas, so you have these increased interactions a lot of the times. More often than not, the crocodile is the one that actually ends up with the you know, short end of the stick. It's a little unfortunate because the encounters most of the time are avoidable. Persons see the crocodile in a drainage and they could very well have gone along their merry way and left the animal alone. They go out of their way and try to catch the animal and they're not trained to do this, you know, so they end up hurting either themselves and more often than not they end up hurting the animal, which by the way is illegal to catch the animal. Injured crocodiles are taken to rehabilitation centers like the Hope Zoo in Kingston. Crocodiles that come to us are rescue crocodiles. We'll bring them in with the ultimate goal of re-releasing them, and that's what we're doing today. We try to release it close to where we actually took it from, with caution. Sometimes the animal is, you know, really massive, and we think it might be a threat in certain areas, we, we move it a little further away. The overall aim of all of these efforts is to conserve crocodile in the wild. Because there tend to be more frequent human-crocodile interactions in Portmore, government scientists are also conducting surveys there to get a better idea of population trends in that area. We've been doing surveys for about three years now once every quarter, counting crocodiles basically. And sad to say, one of the best places that you see crocodiles in Jamaica is at the sewage ponds. You get such big counts there. We go to the natural ponds and we might get one eye shine, you know, one crocodile on the pond, this huge pond. And when we go to the sewage ponds, we realize that, you know, there are tens, you know, twenties, thirty, or even more crocodiles there. The crocodile feel really safe over there because no one goes over there, there's water over there, there's fish over there, there's birds over there. It's actually a, a very easy survey because it's already in a grid work system. There are 24 ponds and we can easily go from pond to pond and assess what is there. So here is a little cutie. Look at this little one. So this is definitely in the one to three category in terms of length, okay. feet. It's probably about two and a half, yeah, just over two feet. Nice. Population on a whole is, is declining and we're fairly confident of that. And that's a common misconception with people. They see crocodiles more often these days and they think you know, the population is on the increase. What it really means is that their natural habitat is being impacted and so they're moving out. To help change the public's perception of crocodiles, outreach programs have been put in place to educate the public. We try to target schools that are smack in the middle of these high encounter areas. And we probably get in there probably once or twice per year. 
You want to educate the adults because the adults are the ones that are having that impact a lot of the times. You don't have children killing crocodiles. But we've decided that it's really best for us to go from the schools, the young people in the schools, they're the ones that are going to be having that impact later down the line. And they themselves now are influencing their parents and so we're seeing some results in that regard. I'm not afraid of them anymore. Now that I've learned all that I need to know about them and know what to do if I see one. Why don't you feel that they're going to run you down and eat you? Because if you stay a distance from them, they won't hurt you. So this is what you guys need to be hearing and thinking about all the time. Would you believe me if I said a crocodile is pretty much as afraid of you as you are of them? Yes, yes please. We tell them it's still an animal that needs to be respected and feared, a healthy fear. But at the same point in time, don't have this feeling that this crocodile is just looking to harm you in some shape or form. Ultimately, saving crocodiles in Jamaica will require active conservation in the wild. We've actually been looking at a dedicated crocodile conservation area. Lawrence Enriquez has shown you know, remarkable interest in that regard. So he has identified an area that he's hoping, with the help of government agencies and international funders, to establish a crocodile wildlife refuge. On the southeastern tip of Jamaica is a rural area known as Holland Bay, where sugarcane fields meet the sea. We have two types of habitat in Holland Bay. You have the natural habitat, what we refer to as the fringe of mangroves and beach and some dry forest. Then we have a large area of what we refer to as artificial habitat, which is the cane lands and canals and drainage system. And these waterways feed the natural habitat. So the waterways, it's providing avenues for crocodiles to expand their ranges through these canal systems, as well as accessing feed through the form of crustaceans and fish, which will breed in these canal systems. So we're looking at total around 11,000 acres of available habitat for these reptiles. Of course, the majority of the cane land, the crocodiles are not going in there, but in the canal system, which crisscrosses, that we call the habitats. The cane lands and other lands surrounding the Holland Bay area acting as a buffer. So it's really quite isolated compared to other areas of the South Coast. Lawrence, who has years of experience breeding and rescuing crocodiles, is setting up a non-profit organization that will work in close collaboration with the government and sugarcane operations to oversee the planned crocodile wildlife refuge and sanctuary. What we want to do is to look at ways of getting refugee type status for these areas to preserve not only the wildlife but the whole ecosystem. We're setting up a facility which is going to be multi-purpose. We're going to have animals that we have specially for breeding that will allow us to produce a regulated amount of young animals each year. So what we want to do is reintroduce a few animals each year over a period of say 10 years for starters. These would all be properly catalogued and microchipped. Plus we will continue with rescue and rehabilitation where necessary, as well as education and field work. And I'm telling you what, it's the most exciting conservation-oriented project for American crocs here in Jamaica, ever. And this sanctuary slash reserve is gonna give the crocodiles in Jamaica a chance. And once we have that, we can replicate it across the island in, in other areas. So we're actually quite excited to get that, that program on board. Jamaica's crocodile population is in trouble. But through education, enforcement, and the work of dedicated individuals, the species may still have a chance to recover. We want people to be able to experience them in the wild. Knowing that it was here, from the time of the dinosaurs, and it just find a way to survive. I just think it's a remarkable animal. You know, these creatures belong on this earth just like you and I. Finding that balance, it's about putting value to the animals. And Jamaica is, is a young nation and we're learning. And so moving forward, I, I think we are slowly getting it. We tend to be very prideful people. Salawa is a pato word, meaning very strong, despite size. So we're a small island and we have a very big personality. Crocodile 
is a part of that personality and presence is synonymous with a lot of what we're very prideful about in our culture. It's not that much of a mammoth task to change culture, it just has to be sustained and that's what I hope will eventually happen.